Stop. Hi, how are you? Good to see you. Good to see you, Julie. Where, where, where are you in the world, Scott? Uh, today I'm in Wheaton, Illinois. Nice, nice. I'm in Illinois too, but a little <laughs> further north of you. And our sun is finally shining. We've had crazy amounts of rain. It's about time. It's about yeah. time. Um, all right. So Studio 111, you have this amazing dynamic team of creatives that I think of being together and collaborating. How have you guys been operating during this time? Well, we've been, uh, we've been using the technologies that everybody else is using. So uh, from Teams to Zoom, you name it, we are, we are on every major platform. Uh, th thankfully for us, the process hasn't really changed. The design process that we all uh, grew up and, and some of us have even taught, it's, it's the same process that we've had faith in for years. The difference is just the way that we get together to collaborate. Uh, the, the good news for us is that designers are by nature pretty tech savvy. They're early adopters. They, they love trying new things. So we've been using a lot of these technologies before. The, the big difference now is that we're using them more frequently, of course. Uh, I, I was recounting to somebody who was telling me about Zoom fatigue the other day uh, that while their team is, is tired of being on video calls all day long, I have a team that's actually now doing daily and sometimes twice a day calls, some of which are structured around projects, but others are, are just sort of free form, open whiteboarding collaboration to share things that they've, they've seen, uh, inspirations that they've run across during the course of the day, or to just sort of whiteboard out ways to, to solve a, a design problem. It's, it's, it's really very inspiring to see that kind of adoption and that kind of uh, that, that love for the new tools. Yeah, I can, I can imagine. Um, looking outward, I know you guys are continuing to do a tremendous amount of work, interacting with customers, clients. What, what things have you seen about the design process that you would attribute to COVID? Or not even about the process, but mm -hmm. about the outcomes that you would attribute to COVID-19? Yeah, well, we're, we're, we're probably seeing the same thing that everybody else is, is seeing, same research reports. Uh, there are some categories that have, have suffered. So those would be cosmetics and, and those that are more on the, the, the luxury end of the spectrum, whereas those that are on the more functional, sort of essential end of the spectrum are actually growing. So it should be no, no surprise to anyone that hand sanitizer sales are up, but so are household cleaning products, so are our personal care products in general. Uh, we, we kind of anticipated that. What we also anticipated, but not to the magnitude that we've seen it, is a shift toward the e-commerce channel. So uh, one would expect that either because you're not able to or because it's your preference not to go to uh, a retail store, the proliferation of, of buying daily essential items from an e-commerce provider as opposed to the, the grocery channel is, is really accelerated. Uh, so for us, that represents both uh, a, a shift and an opportunity. E-commerce brings with it certain requirements that retail packaging does not uh, call for. Uh, you think about something that goes through the normal grocery supply chain. There are established ways of handling products as they move through that supply chain. With e-commerce, your trigger sprayer bottle might get tossed into a cardboard box along with one pillow pack a paperback novel and some auto parts. There's no provision <laughs> right. that anyone ever had in their minds for, for those sorts of circumstances. So e-commerce or packaging for e-commerce rather has to be more robustly designed to move through that channel. But the, this, the studio was already doing some of these things even before this happened, correct? We were, uh, again, these are, these are things that we anticipated. These were trends that, uh, we certainly wanted to be in front of, and, and to, to a major extent, we were in front of, but the, the, the gas pedal is to the floor at yeah. this point, as you might expect. Uh, people, our clients are asking for things, and they're asking for them right away. Uh, because of the explosion in some of the categories I mentioned earlier, it really is a scramble to find the components at all, let alone to find the best components. Right. So while we're working to satisfy the near-term need, we're also looking at ways to help brand owners focus on the longer term. 
So there will be a return to normalcy. We're, we're, we're wired in such a way as, as, as biological creatures to eventually re revert back to what we consider to be a, a normal. We go back to the mean. And so as, as people try to do that and find that they're unable to do so, the, the products that we interact with have to accommodate those limitations. And so, uh, again, we're, we're just trying to get brand owners that we work with to think not just about the near term and meeting people's needs and requirements and getting product into the pipeline, but also building for the longer term and, and being more anticipatory. Interesting. What about messaging? Do you think brand owners are, do you think there's going to be any permanent shifts in messaging or these are more short term? I think most of it's short term. Uh, if you're, if you are a steward of a successful brand, it would not be wise on your part to shift the, the, the essence of what your brand is about because of an idiosyncratic disruption like COVID-19. Yes, it's a big disruption, but if everyone decides that they're going to change the basic aspects of what their brand stands for, well, we're, we're going to have a lot more brand failures than we have today. Uh, we need to think about key levers. We need to think about what, what folks need right now. They need trust. They need security. They need to feel like the products they use are, are going to do what they say they're going to do. Uh, and then as a bonus, of course, the things that we try to do every day, which is deliver a little bit of delight. So it's one thing if, if the, the products you use do what they're supposed to. It's another thing entirely if they give you some non-obvious or some better than anticipated way of, of doing something that you, you have to do every day, like household cleaning. Yeah, that's interesting. And, and I've been surprised as someone, you know, who came into the packaging industry, you know, a few years ago, just how much delight the studio delivers in packaging. It's really you get that packaging geekiness, you know, you, your, your trip to a grocery store is forever changed. Yeah. You... <laughs> I, I, I thought you were going to say what, it, what I have to say uh, all the time. Don't send me to the grocery store. Right. If you need a loaf of bread. I'll, yeah. I'll be back two hours later. It's, it's, <laughs> it's not a simple thing. Well, you know, shifting back to your team, what surprised you about this? What surprised you about your team during this time? Yeah, it's a, it's a good question. Um, I'd have to say the lack of surprises surprised me the most. So, uh, you know, we're, we're, we're designers, we're innovators. We, we, our stock and trade is the unknown unknowns. So we're always looking for them. We're always trying to avoid them. We're always trying to, to gather as much information as we can to make sure that when we respond to an opportunity, we're doing so in a, in a fulsome, logical way. It's really hard to do that during a disruptive event like COVID-19. It's, it's hard to anticipate all of the, the near-term and long-term consequences of, of, of working together and making sure that uh, running projects is going to work uh, the way it always has, or, or even better during this crisis. So I'm surprised that we haven't run into more hiccups or more issues. We're we are on a daily basis still making introductory client presentations. We are still training each other in our sales force on a daily basis. And, and of course, we're still delivering great work and presenting it remotely on a daily basis. So uh, those are the things that always got most of us up in the morning and, and, and made us excited to go to work. And they still do. Yeah. Yeah. It's been amazing to see the, just the quality and the volume of work coming from the studio. Yeah. And if, it, if I could just give a, an unabashed shout out to that team. It is, it is not only the most talented and inspiring group of creatives that I've worked with in over 30 years of the business, but, but right now they're really proving to be the most resilient group of folks that I've ever worked with. Design, designers and creatives in general are not known for being accommodating and flexible. And yet uh, at, at this time, when that's exactly what we need them to be, uh, we've never once had to say to the group, hey, let, let's let's bend ourselves to accommodate this new normal. It's uh, it's it's a group that has readily accepted the change and the disruption and, and making the most of it. Well, I'm I'm looking forward to the time. Your team also has the best music, and you guys have the best snacks on your floor. So I'm looking for the time when we're back in the office. I can come to the 13th floor, and you guys make the best espressos. So I look forward to being back, coming and having a coffee in person, and. Thank you. It was great talking to you, Scott. Good to talk to you, Julie. Take care. Bye-bye.